All right, we welcome the internet. Uh, Romans 16, verse 17. Uh, he tells them, Now I beseech you, brethren, Paul writing to the Romans, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. And I've heard it said, and I've asked people, say, How, what kind of message was it? Oh, it was a good message. What did you preach on? I don't know, but it was good. Well, like I asked you one time, have you ever read the statement of faith of this church? And uh, it was written many years ago, and there's some things in there I really don't agree with. But uh, they I don't know who drawed it up or whatever, but people go to church and they never know what a church believes. They go because of certain reasons, and I'm not going to get into those. But a doctrinal issue is something you got to know because how are you going to mark somebody that's causing divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you've learned unless you know it? And the word doctrine has to do with, it's, it's mentioned two different ways. One, it's the, the act of something. In other words, a doctrinal thing is the act of something. It's a statement about the act of something. And the other is the teaching of the substance of it. Uh, and we can look at both of them. Look in 2 Timothy chapter 3. And obviously, if the Bible means anything at all, it means what it says in the first and second Timothy letter, it's written to Timothy, and it has to do with teaching. There are teacher letters in here, there are a uh, Roman letter written to Gentiles that have gotten circumcised, and how that they're, they've got to change their mind about it, because circumcision and the law and what they're teaching ain't right at that time. Then you got the Galatians who heard the truth and supposedly received the Spirit, and then they were trying to make themselves more perfect by getting circumcised, and he called them fools. You have uh, Titus, which is another pastor, teacher, and he informs him of, of things that he needs to know. And then, of course, you got the Ephesian and Colossian letter to people who really didn't know anything. They they weren't religious in the sense of true doctrine. Uh, they had their idols and they had the things that they did. And one of the problems with the Colossians, they were <clears throat> enemies in their mind by wicked works. And uh, people know some things they do wrong and they have it in their mind that they don't think God might not be able to save them because of what they've done. And I've heard that so many times. That's a, that's a cop out. You know, so I don't know whether God could save me or things I've done. You ain't done anything different than anybody else. There's no nothing that's not common. There's no temptation which is not common to men. And there's no new thing under the sun. We're, I mean, we're talking about what the Bible says. And so when you say, I don't know whether God could save me or what I've done, the, your, the statement is wrong in itself. He already has. The salvation's already there. It's whether you can trust it or not. That's the whole issue of salvation. So in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse uh, 14, he said to Timothy, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And the assurance comes from the Scriptures. Uh, Paul says that all Scripture, whatever has been given by God, and people say that the King James is old and archaic, and they need to bring it down to where they can understand it. Well, if you don't understand it up here, if you bring it down, you ain't going to understand it. So either level you're going to be without understanding. So why don't you understand the King James? Because you don't have the Spirit of Christ in you to show you what he said. This is what God said, which is the Word, which is Jesus Christ. This is the writings of Jesus Christ, the Word, which is God. And that's the way it is in the Bible. And the reason people don't like the King James is because it hasn't got anything really good to say about us. It is about the Lord. And when the flesh reads the King James, it gets disturbed, gets upset, and decides it don't want to read anymore, don't want to find out anymore, and so reads something else or 
get a new translation. That's the best way I can decide it. But you've got this man, Timothy, who is chosen by God through Paul, and he probably has a Greek daddy and a Jewish mother. And Paul circumcises him to keep him to where he can go with him at that time in the book of Acts. Titus was also uncircumcised, and they were demanding that, and Paul wouldn't do it. When it came to a demand, he wouldn't do it. He, nobody demanded Timothy. Paul did that on his own. And when he was a boy, his mother and grandmother, Lois and Eunice, taught him the scriptures, and they had holy scriptures. What the scriptures could do if God reveals can make what it says. Now what? That from a child, verse 15, that has known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. The wisdom unto salvation is knowing what the salvation is. Our gospel says that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture. So Timothy and his mother and grandmother teaching the Scriptures might not have understood what it said and didn't understand until God sent someone to him. And that man's name is Paul. Somewhere in your life, God sent to you the Apostle Paul through somebody. And those scriptures are able to make you wise unto salvation because you understand what was written in the scripture that the devil didn't know. The devil had no idea that the cross would save you. The tree was a curse. And that's what Peter talks about. And Paul refers to it in Galatians chapter 3 that uh, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. The tree took, and you have to go back to the Old Testament as you read, you find out that in Deuteronomy chapter 11, hold, go, hold here and go to Deuteronomy 11. In Deuteronomy 11, the Lord said, and what's in Deuteronomy 5? Anybody know? Ten Commandments. All right, now, would the Ten Commandments save them? Will the law ever save you? No, it's a teacher, okay? In Deuteronomy 11, verse 26, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Now, this is not Genesis 12 in Abraham. This is about the law. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of, every, uh, out of the way which I command you this day, to go after other gods which you have not known. Jeremiah talks about that Israel committed adultery with stocks and stones. That's idols. They took them from the Gentile heathen. Those idols and new gods came up that their fathers didn't know. I mean, they made God after gods after God. I mean, you think about it. Moses in Exodus 3 has killed a man and has run out into the wilderness been out there 40 years he's, he's afraid to go back and don't want to go back to Egypt he buried an Egyptian in the sand because he killed him because he was harassing a Hebrew uh, man and out there this bush begins to look like it's on fire the bush is not burning it's an angel of flame in there and this angel speaks to him out of the bush looks like a fire it isn't consumed said, take thy shoes off, this is the holy ground. And God speaking through this angel, which he did in time past, he spoke through the prophets, he delivered things by angels, I mean, he talked to them in diverse manners. He said, I've heard the affliction of my people, and I'm going to take and get them out. I'm going to deliver them. And Moses you know what? you you got to read this. Exodus. It's amazing what he said. Anybody remember when God 
talked about Moses speaking to Pharaoh, what he said. Who am I? I can't speak. Uh-huh. Let's see. I've heard people say that I can't speak. Uh-huh. Let's watch. Exodus 3, verse 10. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people and the children of Israel out of Egypt. And the reason I'm bringing this up, a lot of times God has a plan for you. And you deny it because of fear, pride, different things. And God doesn't push you. And you lose that fruit. Verse 11, Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go into Pharaoh and I should bring forth the children of Egypt, uh, Israel to Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this is, shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee <clears throat> when thou hast brought forth the people of Egypt, uh, brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and say unto them, The God of your fathers. You see, go back with me and look at something here in uh, Acts. Hold here, go to Acts 7. This is what Stephen said. You get a real good account through Stephen. And remember, after Stephen gave this account, you know what they did to him? They stoned him. And you know who was there? Saul of Tarsus. If I can find this. Uh, uh, Acts 7, verse 22. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians... Now, are you reading to me what that last part of that verse says? Say it again. And when God tells him what he's going to do, Moses don't want to do it. And he said, I can't speak. Did I miss you, folks? This is, this is how we talk to God sometimes. God wants you to do something. I, I can't do that. Well, if God told you to do it, you know what you could do? <laughs> no, no, I'm trying to get this over you. Here's Moses. Is he learned in the Egyptian way, and he were indeed. Could he stand before the Egyptians and make a speech as a prince? No doubt. He better learn. I mean, he knows the Egyptian way. He worships cows, lions. That's what they worshipped in Egypt. Why did God have to take them out of Egypt? What kind of worship does he expect? That's exactly right. And they can't do it in Egypt. They cannot. Boy, you kill an animal in Egypt like that. Ooh, my. And so God's going to take them out in the wilderness, let them be able to sacrifice because God requires sacrifice. He got Moses there. He chooses Moses. Moses out there, he's a murderer. God chooses funny people, don't he? Uh, David, adulterer, uh, uh, conspiracy to murder. I mean, you name it, David does it. He even numbered it. God loved him. You get up, you got preachers stand up every Sunday morning and tell you, if you don't quit that, God will get you. Get you. He might use you. But why is he going to get you? Would there be anybody left in here that didn't get God? If it's based on what I hear preaching most of the time. I mean, folks, we all broke the law. <clears throat> the law was a schoolmaster. It wasn't given to save. The law works wrath. Moses said, I, I can't speak. And then God said, who made your tongue? I, I'm trying. I'm, maybe I miss you, folks. When you say I can't, God already can. I just can't speak to people. I, I just don't know how to invite them. You're a lying dog. You want to invite them over to have barbecue? 
You'll invite them over to have a picnic. You'll, over, you'll go have a party at your house and just idle chit-chat for hours. Talk about everything under God's heaven. Visit and talk and everything else. But when it comes to, I can't witness to them people. He could if you would. The Lord is made your tongue. The body of Christ. How many members in it? Have no idea. Are there more than one? Sure there is. Does every member have a different ministry? Probably. Through the years, they've had the same ministry, only at different times. The ministry of the body, we're a walking witness of the resurrection of Christ. And what do we believe doctrinally about it? See, what is your doctrine? What is the doctrine you believe? What, what doctrine is it that I know about the resurrection of Christ? Paul said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. What was the power of his resurrection to the body of Christ? Who delivered you? And who will deliver you? And who will always deliver you? The Lord. Why did Jesus die? That he might deliver us from this present evil world. Galatians 1.4 That's why he gave himself. That he might deliver us. Do you want your friends delivered? Not to keep the mouth shut. They cost me, Brother Jerry. Uh, it didn't cost the Lord. It didn't cost Paul. It didn't cost all the believers. It cost to stand in your doctrine. But you got to know the doctrine. Because if you don't know your doctrine, how are you going to mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to it? You have to know your doctrine. Okay, and as Stephen stood here and preached, one of the things that he preached was the fact that when God sent Moses, they refused him. They didn't like him. God sends people that people don't like. Now, I ain't never had anybody mad at me, but I know that there's some people. You know. Uh me and Jimmy Brown sat there one time and thinking about since Bible camp when I met him in the 80s, whatever, I don't remember exactly, long time ago, how many people have left the Bible study. Loved the truth. Oh, my God, they were so excited. And then just one little thing, they left. They've gone. Never come back. Other people come and listen one time. Oh, my God, that was great. And you never see them again. Well, I thought it was great. By the way, have you ever tasted anything you liked and you wanted to eat it again? And you did. Why'd you do that? Because you wanted to. You do anything you want. You make provision for what you want. That's the provision of every way. I don't know if I can do that, <clears throat> but you can do anything else. That's a provisionary thing that people do. I can do that, but I ain't going to do that. Well, Moses said, I can't speak. Well, who made your tongue? You learned over there in the Egyptians you're mighty in word and wisdom and deeds. I mean, you could stand before people and talk like a prince of Egypt. You were raised to be a prince of Egypt. You're an Egyptian. You don't even know God's name. You don't know nothing about circumcision. You like to got his boys killed because they weren't circumcised. And his wife went over there and circumcised them. And I hope it was a sharp stone or a knife. And throwed the bloody foreskins on the feet of Moses and said, You're a bloody husband unto me, like I got my children killed. All because of lack of knowledge. Number one, studying gives you what? Knowledge. When he tells the Thessalonians, study to learn to be quiet, that's not about testimony, that's to quit bitching and moaning. Learn to be quiet. Learn to trust. You know, <clears throat> Proverbs 3, 5, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not thine own understanding. All thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. The problem with people not wanting to follow the path of the Lord is they're afraid they'll lose something. It never said that. Because along that path, you know what God does? He can do exceedingly above all that we ask or think. How many of you in here are hurt for stuff? Huh? How many are hurting for stuff? 
How would you like to move all your stuff? <laughs> I go in that building back there and I look at all my stuff and I say, oh God, I hate to move all this stuff. I need to clean this building up. I don't want to. Okay, I say, well, you, you don't know where everything is. I say, I know where everything is. I just know it's disorganized. But I know where it's at. And I can go to it. But it's not in laid out like, you know, some people are so precise that everything has to be this way. I go in mine, I kick around, I know where it's at, and I pick it up, whatever. I'm just not that organized. I like organization, but I ain't going to do it because I don't want to. That's just the way it is. I don't want to. I, I go in my nut and, nut and bolt bin, and they, I ain't got them separated. I dig around until I find what I wanted. Hey, some people separate them. Oh, my God, I just can't do that. I, I don't care. But the, the issue with Moses he don't know God. He has no idea the doctrine that God's fixing to bring to him. And the same with Saul of Tarsus. I mean, old Paul said, you know, I'm a ze I was a zealot to the traditions of my fathers. And tradition is what the problem was when the true deliverer that would roar out of Zion when it came in virgin birth there's the deliverer he would get them out of Rome if they wanted to if they wanted to let him folks you ever thought about why don't a person want to be forgiven totally and not worry about it ever again because grandma and grandpa and great grandma and grandpa and mom and dad didn't believe that why should I believe it give me that old time religion good enough for them is good enough for me good enough for what doctrinally wise and so Moses said, who, who do I tell him you are? And I'm, I am that I am. Tell him I am has come to deliver you. They didn't like Moses. They refused Moses. They didn't like him. Well, you know, <clears throat> the path that people are put on by the Lord does not mean that the people they're going to go to will like them. That's why I asked some people that, you know, they think they want to preach, and I said, how thick is your skin? Because you're going to run into people that don't like you. And you're going to run into people that reject you. Can you handle it? I didn't say you wouldn't cry about it, and I didn't say you wouldn't moan about it. But do you like it? Do you think you can handle it? Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. I've learned whatever state I'm in to be with content. I know how to abase. I know how to abound. With all, be content. Why? Because the Lord has a purpose in all this. And for him to appear at Moses in a bush and tell him, I'm going to send you in there. Lord, they don't like me. And I can't speak. I made your tongue. But there's Aaron walking over there. Moses lost part of his ministry. And he made Aaron high priest. Moses wouldn't have been high priest. He's a Levite. He would have been the high priest. The high priest. Instead, he ain't the high priest. He's just a deliverer. A lot of times people say, I believe God's called me to preach. Really? I don't think so. Why are you talk to me like that? And I said, if I can discourage you, you ain't got it. When they ordained me three and a half years after I saved, down in Florida. Brother Moore asked me, he said, I'd like to ordain you. I said, why? He said, well, Bob and Bob Slocum and Barry asked, asked me to ordain them, and he said, I want to ordain you. I said, well, what good is it? And he said, well, legalities, but I want to send you forth. I said, okay. So we went and set up on a stage, three of us. No Bible. Couldn't have your Bible. And three or four men began to ask questions. And the last question that Brother Moore asked me, he said, if I don't ordain you today, what will you do? I said, continue to teach. He said, that's great. That's all I wanted to know. And in the ordination back there, I had a girl accuse me one time. She said, what are you, some jack leg preacher? <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> but I am ordained. And she looked at me and I, really? She didn't know I was ordained. And she's been coming to Bible study ever since. Just because I was ordained. 
And one man said he'd come to Bible class for five years to make sure he could. He wanted to find something wrong with me so he could quit coming. He's been coming 15 years now. Now, ain't that an attitude? I want to just find something wrong with you. What about the doctrine? What's the matter with the doctrine? Check the doctrine out. What's, what is the doctrine? All right? Now watch. Look at Proverbs chapter 3. I, I apologize. We go back to 2 Timothy before I leave there. 2 Timothy 3. Number one. Should or should not a man preach the word? Okay? What should he preach from? Why do you believe the King James? What do you know? How do you know it's holy? What makes it holy to you? They're going to question you on this. What makes the King James holy to you? What is there in there that you need in that King James that ain't in the other ones? Are we stumped here? The gospel's in the other Bibles. The faith. How do you keep the faith if you don't know what the faith is? How do you depart from something that's departed from the faith? Did I do something wrong? Folks, what is in that King James that you need? The faith. Was there a time that faith wasn't on the earth? Galatians. Turn to Galatians. Uh, let's read this and then we'll go to Galatians. In 2 Timothy 3.15, that from child that is known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scriptures given by the inspiration of God is probable for, say the word, doctrine. For reproof, for correction, for instruction and writing, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Do I need seminary? But I do need holy scriptures. Right? Okay, turn to Galatians. The deacons are supposed to know the mystery of the faith in pure conscience. Did I sit down with you and one day and showed you? The faith in pure conscience. The mystery. What is it? God would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in two times. You cannot be a segregationist with the faith. Is it all men? It's absolute. All right, Galatians chapter 3. If I can find in this Bible there was a time when faith hadn't come, and then I find a time when faith has come, and if I can find where somebody tells me about the faith, then I got a pure standing doctrine, hadn't I? Pure standing doctrine that is absolute, and if the King James is the only one in the world that does it, then it's holy. Right or wrong? All right, Galatians chapter 3, verse 21. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. He never changed one thing when he gave the law. He never changed anything he promised. Was Abraham under the law? No. Did he promise to Abraham? And you tell me what he promised Abraham, and it's called the gospel in Galatians 3.8. Read it and see. Galatians 3.8, what does it say? And the what? Plural or single? The scripture did what? All right. Is God going to justify the heathen through faith? Not by faith. 
Israel's by faith. They have to repent, be baptized, so forth and so on. Through faith. Did you come in this church through that door? Then does that door exist? Does this church exist? <clears throat> you came in here. Through. Right? All right. Galatians 3. <clears throat> Verse 8 says in the scripture foreseen that God would justify the heathen through faith. Preach before the gospel unto Abraham. Go to Genesis and see if you can find the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. But he did. What did Christ do for you? Give me the gospel. Young man, do you know the gospel? Could you quote it? Maybe when you leave here today you can quote it. I'm going to quote it with you real slow. Christ died for our sins, according to the Scripture. And He was buried, and He rose again the third day, according to the Scripture. That's the gospel of Christ. That is not the gospel of Peter. That's our gospel. Okay? So that's the gospel of Christ. I had no idea that at his age, nobody ever told me that. I had two young men like yesterday answering questions that they, it, it surprised them they could answer it. It was like, I didn't know I knew that. I mean, Carson is like, wow, wow, you know. Just been to football practice. Sat there, eating pizza, offered me a pizza. One of them brought me a bottle of water, didn't even ask. <clears throat> Got studied, I asked them a lot of questions yesterday, and they answered them. That's been over a progress of time. But you understand, their daddy's getting them the word. And he's staunch about it, too. What if I was stubborn and say, no, you got to come to church? He won't do it. Okay? So, he preached the gospel unto Abraham. The word gospel means good news. He preached some good news to Abraham. He said, in thee, Genesis 12, in thee, Shall all families of the earth be blessed? What's the greatest blessing that you could ever have? Amen. Salvation. Now let's watch. In verse uh, nine. So then, they which be of faith are, of Ab uh, are they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Of faith, right? Not by faith. Of faith. Let's read on. For as many as are as many are, I apologize. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Do you realize what churches are putting people under? For it is written, "Curse is everyone that continueth not in all things which are in, written in the book of the law." Do that. Do you know? Do you believe that in churches today they know all that's written in the law? No. Nah. Do you? No. Nah. Okay, now let's read on. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. That's Paul and Israelites. They have been redeemed from the curse of the law. And it'd be all people, if somebody tries to put you under the law, you've been redeemed from it. Okay? Redeemed from the curse of the law, as written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a what? What did Jesus hang on? Then, to them, he's a curse. And God's letting him be a curse for Israel and those under the law, that he can take them out from under the curse, out from under the law. Now, watch. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Through Jesus Christ, that we might receive, tell me what it says. The promise of what? Through faith. The faith. Through this faith. Through the faith. Okay? Now, read on. Verse 22, 1. Is the law then against the promises of God? No. 
Abraham didn't have the law and it got promised. God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of who? Every translation will change that to in. Every one of them will change that. Shut up. They'll take the word of out and put in. What have they done? And they've denied you the faith of Christ. Let's read on. Now watch. The promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to all uh, to them that believe. But before, say it with me. You mean there's a time in history when faith came? Yeah, it's called the virgin birth. Then it's called the crucifixion. He got to be born of a virgin or the book's a lie. The virgin birth, he lives for 33 years, and then they hang him on a cross. They hang him on a tree, because that's what they knew it as. That's what Peter preached. Hung him on a tree. God refers to it to us as a cross. The cross is salvation to us. The tree is a curse for them. Okay? If somebody under the law had somebody hang on a tree and became accursed, wouldn't he be taking them out from under the curse? That's what he's doing for them, right? <clears throat> All right. What if somebody hang on a cross and died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day? Then wasn't he taking us out from under our sins? See the message difference? It's right there, perfect, plain. Okay? But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up and do <clears throat> the faith which should after be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is what? So you got a period of time when faith ain't here, then you got a period of time when faith is here, and it ain't your faith, it ain't even talking about your faith. So there's a time, doctrinally, a time when faith came into the world. This faith is going to be the righteousness of God. Romans 3, 20, 3, 19 and 20 and 21. Okay? That faith has to be known. Why is it that important? Ephesians. Ephesians chapter uh, 2. No, Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 13, uh, 11. According to the eternal purpose which He purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence. Read it out loud. By the faith of Him, not your faith. The only way I got access to the Father is by the faith of Jesus Christ. So what doctrine do you believe? Romans 15, a 16 said, if a man cause division, offense is contrary to the doctrine you have learned, avoid them. That means throw the NIV, the RSV, and every other translation into the fire, use it for a fire starter, because that's all it's good for. Take King James. Say, why do you believe the King James? Because it preserves the faith of Christ. That's first. Right? Colossians 2. Uh, Colossians 1, I apologize. Another doctrine that should be observed. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from what? What's the power of darkness? death let's check make sure Hebrews hold this just a minute go to Hebrews chapter 2 all you got to do is read 1 Corinthians 15 55 through the end of the chapter and you'll understand this 
Hebrews 2, verse 14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Do you realize that Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, became flesh and had to live in this miserable, evil world just like you did? The only thing is, everybody hated him. You don't have everybody hating you. And the very ones that should have loved him had him on a cross, on a tree, by the Romans, had him stripped naked, had had his beard pulled out, spit in his face, his back beaten till it was open wounds, had his blood draining out, and they said, crucify him, we have no king but Caesar. And it was a Gentile tree. Now watch this. He himself also likewise took part of, of the same, that by death or through death. You know why it says through? He went through the whole motions of death. Okay? Through death. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. You know what the devil did in the garden to you? He got you killed. Wherefore is by one man, sin in the world, death by sin. So death passed upon all men for all have sinned. Hebrews 9, 27, it's appointed once for men to die, and after this, the judgment. And you don't have to face either one of them. Your judgment is based on rewards. It's not based on the Revelation 20 judgment. He defeated him. Now, 1 Corinthians 15, watch. Did I do something wrong or are you just all in a chicken phase? <laughs> Coming through the vents, ain't it? That boy probably smells that chicken, don't you? 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 55. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Did the devil get Jesus killed? Okay. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Did Jesus come out of the grave whether he liked it or not? The devil couldn't stop that, could he? Did Jesus have the own words that he wrote down in the prophets saying that he... His body would rest in hope. His flesh would rest in hope. And he would go up and the joy he looked forward to is going to the Father again. He left the Father, lived down in this mess, and left and went back to the Father. And now seated at the right hand of the Father. We got all that scripture. Sure as world, Ephesians 1 and 2. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. The joy that he has, he wants to give to us. And the joy that we have <clears throat> is that we share the gospel to someone, and if they are there when we are there, they're our joy. That's 1 Thessalonians 2, the end of the chapter. You will not go up there and show God your house. You will not go up there and show God your cars or your stuff and everything you had. What you want to be looking at is somebody standing there. That's your joy because you told them. You're coming into a time when you don't want to talk because of the pressure around you and the evilness around you. That's what the God of this world is doing. Go out and get your joy. What did he say? Get your joy back. Were you happy when you got saved? Don't forget it. If you have a ministry, do it. If you're not a preacher, maybe you're a, <clears throat> a help. If you're a help, do it. If you're a giver, give it. If you're a worker, work it. Do it. If you want to get out of this world, find them. Let him direct your paths. God ain't directing your path to get you rich. He ain't directing your path... To get you to where you can get in living in the high life. He's directing your path to somebody else because nobody else knows it. Your church members, your friends, they don't know it. They go to church and they don't know it. You know how I know? Going to church don't know it. They follow other Bibles. <clears throat> they do not believe the faith. They believe it's their faith. If you believe it's his faith, show them. You'll get a conversation going, believe me. 
real quick, and it probably won't be good, but that's okay. Watch verse 56. <clears throat> 55, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Uh, I killed him, but he got up on me. Huh. Can you imagine the day that the devil lost Saul? I mean, Saul was a great devil worker. Buddy, he was a persecutor and injured against the church at Jerusalem. And one day the Lord saved him right out from under old Satan. And it was like, well, what's that all about? Well, well, how are you saving him? What, what kind, he, he rejected the doctrine of Acts 2 at Pentecost. How can you save that character? And then Paul comes out with the gospel and he says, Christ died for our sins according to Scripture. And he was buried and he rose again the third day. I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. And he said, I received the grace of God. Ephesian letter, he's put in prison. The devil said, I'm going to shut him up. He's doing these traveling ministries and people are getting saved. I'm shutting him up. Put him in prison. And so he sat down and wrote the Ephesian and Colossian letter for you and I. And in the prison epistles, he made... He made a way for teachers to have a guide because the prison epistles included First and Second Timothy and Titus. And if preachers would follow it, they'd know what to preach. I see preachers, they go to bookstores and find their sermons. Well, what's wrong with this? This is inexhaustible. We could go on what John asked me a question down in Panama one time. Went five weeks. He said, "I ain't never answering you another question." <laughs> I've seen Brother Moore go through a thing and go months with it. It's inexhaustible. When I first came here, I said, "How am I going to preach on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday? I'm going to run out of gas." I did, but this didn't. And I know I say some things sometimes uh, repeating it uh, about my life or whatever else. <clears throat> but you know what? It might hit you at the right day. God knows. And God knows how to hit you, don't he? Uh, people come up to me and say, Brother Jerry, you're preaching to me today. And I said, I'm sorry. I didn't know I was. <laughs> I really didn't know. But God does. And when God preaches... He's got a reason because his word never returns void. When he sent the word, the faith is the word because it's Jesus Christ. If you deny the faith, make it your faith, you denied the word. And if you deny the word, what do you got? You have no doctrine, period. Amen?